assalamu alaikum in our previous lecture we were discussing the term e business and what are the various advantages of e businesses as compared to traditional offline businesses if you remember i told you that an e business can in simple terms be defined as a business which has uh, an online presence and it is doing e commerce it can be an organization it can be an individual etc the advantages of online businesses are considered to be more if we compare them with offline businesses so there is a list of these advantages in the form of a slide before you first of all personalized service which means that the nature of the technology is such that the merchant can afford to provide a customized a personalized service to its customers therefore the merchant side can analyze can figure out the needs of its customers and then on the basis of an analysis it can then come up with the solutions it can come up with the services which are compatible with the needs of its customers so i told you that traditionally there are four p's in marketing product price promotion and place and e-commerce has introduced a fifth p that is personalization so you are familiar with the concept cookies with the help of cookies we can track the customers and then we can study their buying pattern and on that basis we can send them targeted messages we can provide them personalized services which are based on the study of their needs on the study of their buying pattern recorded in the databases then the second advantage is high quality customer service i mentioned that the nature of the technology again is such that we can conveniently receive the input or the feedback of our customers as regards our online business and in the light of that input that feedback then we can instantaneously quickly improve our service for our customers so in the form of an email for that matter the customers can report their feedback can provide their input and we can then modify our services we can improve our services to those customers we can eliminate their complaints etc then another benefit of uh, any business is no inventory cost or a minimal inventory cost i was explaining that concept to you and i told you that the online environment is such that we can act as a middleman or we can act as an intermediary and instead of having warehouses where the inventory is lying and then we are incurring the cost of maintaining that warehouse maintaining that inventory it is quite probable it is quite possible that by acting as a middleman we create a website we receive the orders from our customers and we then satisfy those orders from the traditional market we know who are the suppliers who are the vendors of those items we pick those items from the physical market and then we deliver to our customers and we charge our commission we make our profit on that basis so in that eventuality it is very cost effective with a very small capital we can generate our online business and then we can maintain our business we can earn profit without as such incurring the cost of having full fledged offices having a building having the salaried employees and incurring the overhead cost incurring the inventory cost etc that was the one main feature which attracted many individuals many companies to go online because it was very cost effective then another advantage another distinction of online business as opposed to offline traditional businesses is the worldwide reach of online businesses so you are familiar with the idea that your online shop is open 24 hours a day 
it is advantageous for both the customers and for the merchant so during any time in the day say during the uh, late night hours a customer can access an online shop and do the buying from there similarly since the shop is 24 hours open for sale therefore it is beneficial for the merchant the merchant can earn more profit another offshoot of this idea is that the geographical boundaries they do not affect the business so you are familiar with this thing that your offline businesses traditional businesses they operate in particular specified areas where they are located so they have a limited range of their customers the customers who belong to those geographical regions they would in all probability be the customers for those offline businesses on the other hand in case of an online business the entire world is a potential customer for the e business so people from all around the globe can access the online shop and do the buying from there then another very important useful advantage of e businesses over the traditional businesses is in terms of electronic catalogs you may have experienced that when you go to an online shop for shopping there is an electronic catalog in most cases that appears before you you can browse through that catalog and then you can make your selections the items that you want to purchase you can put those items you can assemble those items in the shopping cart the advantage of the electronic catalog is that the process of selection of items is very convenient it is very quick the electronic catalogs they can be updated they can be modified they can be expanded and there is no limit as such of putting the items on the electronic catalog which limitation is there in case of paper catalogs then another important useful benefit is bulk transactions which means that since you do not need to carry your items your goods in the form of bags so therefore you can afford to carry out transactions in bulk you can purchase plenty of items in a single transaction you are not worried about the fact that you will have to carry them along and they are in bulk and then another benefit is improved supply chain management traditionally in a supply chain there are three entities three parties involved so there would be suppliers of raw material there would be manufacturers who would use that raw material to make the end products and then there would be the third party the end customers who would buy these end products from the manufacturers and in this form a chain called the supply chain management that is constituted imagine if all these entities or some of these entities they are online they are electronically connected with each other then certain emergency orders can be got executed very quickly these orders can be processed very quickly so in case a manufacturer receives an emergency order the manufacturer can send an order in the electronic form to the supplier that order on the supplier's end would be quickly processed because it is in the electronic format and then as a result the supplier can send the raw material to the manufacturer very quickly we call that just in time delivery right so therefore one advantage to the manufacturer would be that the manufacturer would not require to maintain warehouses in order to put this uh, raw material to stock this raw material the manufacturer would expect to receive just in time delivery and therefore the manufacturer would not be likely to incur any inventory cost because of the concept of just in time delivery similarly the execution of the orders from the end customers these orders can be very quickly processed at the manufacturers and 
the manufacturer can provide the status of the execution of these orders, the implementation of these orders electronically to the end customers, so they can know all the status about the delivery of the items if these entities they are online. So we can, in simple terms, say that our supply chain management that improves tremendously if we are electronically enabled if the businesses are online. So these are some of the main advantages that I have uh, tried to point out to you, which an online business has over the traditional offline businesses. On the other hand, there are a few disadvantages also. If you make a comparison, you can also come up with certain disadvantages associated with online businesses. What are those? Can you figure it out? Yes, security. So one of the main disadvantage associated with an online business is in terms of security. You are familiar with this uh, concept quite uh, well. So whenever a customer would enter his credit card number in a text box in order to make the payment online to an online business, he would be scared because there is a potential, there is a likelihood that somebody might hack that sensitive credit card number information and then misuse that. This problem does not arise in case of offline businesses as such. Similarly, since the technology is of such a nature that the information about the customers, their uh, uh, registration information, biodata, their financial information, that may be stored on the server side in the databases. And there would be a potential of the thing that some unauthorized person would access that database and then get the knowledge of all that sensitive information. So we can say that the environment online is not safe, is not secured as such. Then another disadvantage is privacy, lack of privacy which means that the informational privacy of individuals who are doing e-commerce online, that would be at risk, that would be at a stake. And I can give you two scenarios in this regard. One is related to cookies. You recall that the cookies, they can track customers online. So therefore, it is possible that with the help of cookies, the merchant side identify, tracks the customers who come for shopping to the merchant side uh, repeatedly, subsequently. And then on tracking these customers, it is possible for the merchant side to discover the buying pattern, the purchasing behavior of such a customer, and then send some targeted personalized messages to such customers. On one hand, it can be useful for the customers because they can receive personalized, customized service. But on the other hand, there is a category of customers who do not like this thing. They do not want to be tracked, right? They don't want that somebody on the merchant side should track them, should identify their buying pattern and then send them targeted messages. It might prove to be annoying for them. Another aspect of lack of uh, privacy is that uh, your important information being a customer is normally kept in the databases on the merchant side and it is not out of uh, probability that the merchant would collect all that information and sell it or market it to the outsiders, to the third parties, right? So it is possible that your 
private information, your buying pattern, all that stuff, all that information recorded on the merchant's side that is marketed, that is sold out to the irrelevant parties, the idea which you do not permit, which you do not like. And then another uh, disadvantage that uh, figures out if we compare the online businesses with the traditional businesses is in terms of lack of physical proximity with the goods. It means that there are certain items that we want to buy online, but we are not able to make a final decision as regards the purchase of such items because we cannot touch those items, we cannot physically experience those items which we otherwise want. So I can give you an example. For example, you want to buy clothes online. Now there is a handicap, there is a disadvantage. If you are buying clothes online, you cannot touch the clothes, you cannot feel the texture of the clothes. And then there is a difficulty for you whether you should buy this stuff, this clothes, this piece of clothes or you should uh, buy uh, the clothes from uh, traditional offline shops. Similarly, there is an issue of size also for certain items, for certain goods that you want to buy online. Say you want to buy shoes. Again, you would want that the proper measurement of your uh, feet should be obtained and then according to that size, according to that measurement, the shoes should be uh, provided to you, they should be sold out to you. So again, there is some handicap and uh, ideally you would want in such cases to buy such items from uh, traditional offline businesses. There is a technology called biometrics technology. So because of this biometrics technology, it is possible that the measurements of the customers, they are electronically obtained with the help of a software and certain uh, infrastructure. And then that information electronically is passed over to the merchant side and accordingly the items, the product of your size, they are supplied to you, they are sold to you. Again, a very interesting example is uh, that of uh, perfumes online. So whenever you want to buy perfumes, preferably you want to uh, smell those perfumes before making a decision as to you should buy them or not. So again, there is a handicap, there is a barrier in case of online businesses which are dealing with the sale of perfumes. So there is a solution again that the technology experts have so far come up with. There is now a device which is uh, being used. You can attach it with your system on the customer side and that can generate certain smells for you, right? So whatever perfume you want to buy, it is probable that a, spe a specimen, a sample smell of that perfume is generated by that device for you and then on that basis you make a decision as to whether you want to buy it or not. I can show you the disadvantages of uh, e-businesses in the form of a slide also. So less security, less privacy, no physical proximity with items purchased. These are the three important disadvantages I have spelt out. And then there is another disadvantage which is more uh, closely associated with the general psyche of the customers, of the individuals and that is the people want to do the bargaining with the merchant. They want to physically go out and uh, do the bargaining with the merchant on the price. So that aspect is also missing in case of uh, online businesses. So some people say that, well, that should be considered as a disadvantage also. That is more related to the psychology of the people, whether the people, they really want to bargain or they want the comfort of doing the shopping. 
online sitting in their comfortable home environment doing the shopping through the internet next i want to discuss with you what are the important different e businesses e businesses which are prevalent over the web so in the form of a slide i have listed a few such businesses or such e business models okay number 1 is the store front model then auction model online banking online trading and lending online recruiting online news services or online publishing online travel services online entertainment online automotive sites and energy online selling intellectual property online online art dealers e learning online service providers and then portal model i would simply touch upon all these different types of e business models very briefly just to give you an idea what is the nature of uh, these e business models so first of all is the store front model that is the most basic the most simple type of uh, an e business model so when you go for buying books or toys or gifts or flowers or computers etc you find a store front an online store front which has got an online catalog you browse through that online catalog and you find the description the price and other features of the items that you want to buy and then there is a shopping cart right and using that shopping cart you can put all those items that you want to buy in that uh shopping cart and then there is a payment processing mechanism which is connected with the with the storefront model and eventually the payment is then made and uh, you are then delivered the items that you have purchased now there is a reference of online catalogs in this storefront model so it would not be out of place if i just give you a brief comparison of online catalogs with the traditional paper catalogs you can look at the screen on the screen the advantages and disadvantages of traditional paper catalogs are listed so on the advantage side these catalogs they are easy to create without high technology so the paper catalogs they do not require any high technology they can be created using simple techniques then number 2 reader is able to look at the catalog without computer system again that is an advantage that the reader or the customer would not require any computer system to read such catalogs then the third advantage more portable than electronic catalog which means that you can carry the paper catalogs very quickly this is a good advantage of paper catalogs as compared to electronic catalog in case of electronic catalogs you need to carry the computer system as such containing that electronic catalog then disadvantages the paper catalogs these are difficult to update the changed product information promptly that means that in case there is any modification any change in the description of the items in the list of the items contained in the catalog then it would be difficult to update or modify the paper catalog each time it would not be cost effective to modify the paper catalog or update it each time then only a limited number of products is displayed again this is a limitation associated with paper catalogs that they can contain only a limited information and uh, beyond that they would not be productive they would not be useful for us we can't 
incorporate every information in the paper catalogs. Now the advantages of online catalogs or electronic catalogs are advantages are listed you can see they are easy to update product information which means that in case there is any change any modification about the product you can easily modify or update your electronic catalog without facing any difficulty you can expand your electronic catalog you can enter more details about the product in your electronic catalog as such then it is able to integrate with the purchasing process which means that the entire purchasing process is integrated with the electronic catalog so your order processing mechanism and your payment processing mechanism all such mechanism such uh, processes they would be integrated with the electronic catalog with the help of a few clicks good search and comparison capabilities this means that it is very easy for you to make comparisons as regards different products and you can do the search job more conveniently in case of electronic catalogs so if you want to compare two products you can view their description in a more convenient fashion you can put them side by side and then you can compare them you can compare their different features and you can therefore do the searching job comparison job more conveniently able to provide timely up to date product information again they can provide up to date information instantaneously more quickly there is no barrier there is no handicap as regards online catalog in this regard can provide broad range of product information so an online catalog can contain a long list of items it, it can contain plenty of information and in it there is no physical limitation as such in case of online catalogs another advantage of online catalogs is the possibility of adding voice and motion pictures that means that you can add multimedia you can add animations you can add colorful pictures you can incorporate all such features in your online catalogs and then they can look more attractive to the customers cost savings the online catalogs they are cost effective you can save the cost of paper printing and distribution in case of online catalogs and therefore they are cost effective you can save the cost of creation of these catalogs easy to customize which means that according to the needs of the customers it is much easier to modify to customize the online catalogs as opposed to paper catalogs and the two disadvantages i have uh, listed here in relation to online catalogs one is that difficult to develop catalogs large fixed cost that means that in case you want to just show a few items it's a small catalog then the cost of creating such a catalog can be quite high it would not be then cost effective it would be cost effective in case you want to incorporate plenty of different items in it there is a need for customer skill to deal with computers and browsers that barrier that difficulty is not there in case of paper catalogs in case of online catalogs one should be familiar one should be skillful to deal with the computers and the browser one should have this know how another type of e business model is the auction model there are certain websites which facilitate this uh, auction process and what happens is that individuals they put their items for auction on these uh, famous websites the auction websites mainly the sellers they provide the description of the items they specify the date till which the auction should continue and they also mention a reserve price that is the lowest price which the seller wants before the bid can be accepted 
So all this information is supplied by the sellers to the through the auction site, and then individuals they access the auction websites, then they do the bidding by the close of the date whose bid is the maximum he wins the auction okay and then at the end of the auction the auction site would inform both the seller and the bidder about the fate of the auction it would work out the mode of payment and it would also charge its commission for the service it has rendered then another type of e business model is uh, online banking there's a lot of hype about online banking these days so in this uh, e business model basically the transfer of funds electronically can take place so there are e businesses which facilitate the transfer of funds through electronic means you can uh, view your account details also using online banking and then uh, you can also pay your utility bills through online banking then online trading and online lending these are again uh, popular e businesses in case of online trading there are brokerage firms who have online presence and they provide you advice as regards the sale of uh, shares the purchase of stocks or shares and they deduct their commission on the conclusion of a trade on the conclusion of a transaction the rate of commission in case of uh, online trading is relatively low as compared to offline trading businesses just to provide an incentive basically then online lending you can apply for loan online and again the interest on that loan would be relatively low in case you apply uh, electronically through an online business for the loan as compared compared to the case when you apply for the loan uh, through an offline business then after that uh, the e recruiting type of uh, businesses they are also quite common what happens is that there would be a website and that would hold certain advertisements from the employee employers the companies the organizations the individuals who seek the services of certain persons so then different individuals they would access these recruiting websites and they would find out that well these are the employers who are looking for this type of uh, individuals in case they qualify for those jobs then they can apply for those jobs again for the prospective employees for the individuals the recruiting websites they also provide a facility the assistance of uh, uh, writing the resumes the covering letters etc free of any charge the commission for its service that a recruiting website would uh, earn that would mainly be drawn from the employer the employer organizations then there are business models uh, which aim at providing online news online information so there are quite a few newspapers now which have online presence and they are 24 hours available they can be updated they can uh, the news can be uh, updated accordingly and the cost of uh, printing paper printing and distribution is minimal in case of online news services as opposed to offline newspapers so that is an advantage for online news service businesses 
Then there are online travel services available, which means that there would be online travel agent. They would be having uh, their websites running and different individuals, they would access their website. They would make request for certain travel services. They would request for the air tickets and there can be requests for lodging, for uh, transportation, etc. All such arrangements would then be made by the online travel agent and for this service, the travel agent would charge its commission. So here let me point out that now it is possible that you can download your airline ticket instantaneously. So without waiting, you make a request for a ticket to the online travel agent and if uh, this is possible, the ticket can be downloaded by the individual instantaneously. Then online entertainment. This is also a very popular uh, type of e-business uh, model. In case of online entertainment businesses, you can uh, download online music albums, video files, films, etc. And uh, you can uh, have this uh, entertaining stuff with you. Then online games that also fall under this uh, category of online entertainment. This is also a very popular uh, revenue generating business uh, online. You have to subscribe to certain websites and then you can uh, play games online. Now, the online lotteries and online gambling, they are also some uh, popular e-businesses which are attaining popularity day by day. Online automotive sites and selling energy online, again a type of uh, e-business. In case of online automotive sites, there can be uh, details about the automobiles. There can be automobiles placed for uh, sale. Their parts can be uh, placed for sale on such websites. The sale of new automobiles can also take place through such automotive websites. And then uh, the sale of uh, energy online, again, is a type of uh, e-business. So if you want to buy uh, electricity online, petroleum or gas online, there are e-businesses running that can facilitate such a transaction for their commission. Selling intellectual property is a common e-business uh, model. So there are uh, organizations, there are e-businesses which help you in selling your intellectual property. Like uh, your uh, copyright, your trademark, your patent rights, these are all different types of intellectual property. Copyright is uh, that exclusive right of an author of uh, a literary or an artistic work which allows only that author to make copies of such work, to reproduce, to make copies, to publish such work. That right is exclusively reserved for the author of such work. A trademark is defined as uh, that symbol which associates the goods of a manufacturer with that manufacturer. So if I write uh, a word in a, diff in a unique style on my items, on my products, then it can be called my trademark. If I register it, then that means that it is associating the manufacturer with the, with the goods on which this uh, trademark is appearing. If I make certain discoveries and uh, sci scientific discoveries for that matter and I register my patent in relation to such discoveries, then my 
patent rights they come into existence all these different uh, rights the trademark the copyright the patent they are generally termed as my intellectual property rights okay so just in case i can sell my building my land my other movable assets being my property similarly these intellectual properties they can also be treated as my assets and i can sell them out for value in case somebody breaches the intellectual property rights of an individual then that individual can claim damages through the process of courts so as i mentioned that there are websites now which can help which can assist in the sale and purchase transactions of intellectual property items then online art dealers so there are certain e businesses uh, which deal in the sale of uh, paintings posters photographs etc and we dub them under the heading online art dealers e learning is another e business model and one very common example is that of virtual university which is doing uh, distance education so wherever the education is being imparted through distance we say that e learning model is being followed so there are certain course development tools which have been developed which help in the development of certain courses and uh, one common advantage in case of e learning is that the uh, publishing of e books publishing of online articles research papers that is very convenient the delivery of such research paper such e books is very convenient and so these are the different uh, advantages which e learning uh, model has associated with it then uh, there are certain professionals who have their websites and through their websites they offer their professional services so it is possible that lawyers accountants doctors they have their websites and through those websites they they provide consultancy services professional services for certain charge to to the customers to the individuals and then uh, there is the portal model that i would like to talk about portal is that website which has got plenty of information on different topics on different subjects contained on that single website there are two different types of portals the horizontal portals and the vertical portals in case of horizontal portals the information as regards broad range of topic subjects is placed on that website so a common example is that of a search engine on a search engine you can access information on different subjects quite conveniently then in case of vertical portals the information contained on the website on the vertical portal is connected with a particular area of interest only so there are certain community portals which fall under this uh, category of vertical portals there can be portals for lawyers the portals for uh, doctors so uh, in such uh, community portals the research papers the articles the information regarding that particular profession that would be available there can be hyperlinks also which can lead to further information about such professions about such uh, communities different uh, organizations they have now started to provide services for online sale also so the there is the yahoo portal which provides which has now provided this uh, additional uh, feature you can uh, use this uh, portal in order to 
do the shopping online and what happens is that there are different links regarding different independently owned store fronts on that portal so using those links you can access those store fronts and you can then do your separate shopping from all such different store fronts and you can make the payment separately okay here i would would like to point out the difference between online shopping malls and the web portals in case of online shopping malls there would be a single website on which different merchants would be selling their items right so there can be a wide range of products or services which are being offered for sale on an online shopping mall and in a single transaction a customer can do the shopping from different merchants sitting on that single website there will be one, there would be one shopping cart that would be used one payment mechanism that would be used and then in a single transaction the shopping can be done the distribution of the payment is then the task of the merchants themselves they have in fact collaborated with themselves to arrange this online shopping mall and they distribute the payment accordingly according to their pre agreed scheme in case of web portals if you go for online shopping through web portals you reach different separate store fronts and you do your shopping separately from these different store fronts there would be hyperlinks for those store fronts you click those hyperlinks you reach those store store fronts and you do your shopping separately then there are two terms which uh, are useful for you to note here one is click and motor and the other is brick and motor brick and motor refers to the traditional offline businesses on the other hand the term click and motor would refer to an online business for those organizations who are doing their business both offline and online it is imperative that they have a complete integration between their offline business and their online business and this integration is difficult to get you have to really conceive a plan to integrate your offline business activities with your online business activities so there is a big uh, book store which has its presence online and it also has uh, its physical shopping store the integration it has achieved technologically is such that its online inventory would display all such items which are lying in the actual store so just in case a person who has bought a book online and he is dissatisfied he wants to return that book he goes to the physical actual store then the change the modification which would be required in the inventory that would automatically be reflected in the online inventory right so that is because there is a complete integration between the online business and the offline business in our today's lecture what we have seen we have discussed what are the advantages disadvantages of online businesses then we have proceeded to see what are the different types of e business models and we have briefly discussed their scope in our coming lecture we shall inshallah be dealing with what are the different revenue generating models and then if time permits then uh, we'll start our new topic that is the internet marketing till then khuda hafiz